Welcome to the channel. My name's Shane and you're watching The Lever Monkey. Today I'm going to be talking about doing a water tie-in. So first things first, we're going to get the rig set up in position so we can uh, start our dig and remove the backflow. You can see there in the background, Andy's already started at removing the bolts from the backflow connections on the bottom of the 90s so it's easy for us just to remove. Now that I'm in position, I'm strapped up, hooked up, and Andy's going to continue unbolting the rest of the backflow preventer so I can just pull it off. And I'm holding it so that way we don't have to worry about it maybe falling and hurting him. So the first thing he's got to do is unbolt all the uh, stainless steel T-bolts that are in it. And then he's going to go ahead and start uh, loosening up the mega lugs that are on it with a uh, hand wrench. Once that's done, then it'll be free for me to yank off. Just keep in mind there's always going to be a little bit of water residual left in it and there's also going to be water in the stand pipes that are there. So always have your laborer, uh, whoever's working with you, go ahead and wrap the top of those pipes because these are lines that need to be uh, kept clean so that way you're not contaminating them. So you see here in the picture on the left hand side there's a actual meter that's on it for the water going into the water system. Somebody's paying for the water. Not sure who, but somebody is. Once these standpipes are finished getting wrapped, then I'll be able to start my dig. Being that this isn't necessarily a digging video, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to zip through the dig on this so that way we can get to the important stuff. Remember, as always, even though you know what's in the ground, there's no telling if someone else came in afterwards and put something in the ground that you don't know of. So you always need to have a spotter when you dig. You should never be digging without a spotter. So here at this point, I've already exposed the far tie-in point, and now we're working on the side that's closest to the main road. Now the whole purpose to these is so that way we can separate the existing line from the new lines going into the housing track. The idea is that we're not going to contaminate the existing lines that are in the streets that are live and feeding other homes already. So we don't want to contaminate those. So that so the backflow, it prevents any contamination going backwards into the public side and keep everything on the private side. And it also allows us to feed the line and load the line. We inject chlorine to chlorinate and decontaminate all the lines that we have installed. So for all you diggers out there that are new to digging and you're going to be doing this eventually, take note of my hands and how I'm not just, I just don't have a death grip on the controls and that I'm moving them with my fingers and my arms aren't moving a whole lot. It gives you a much more control over the machine when you're using your fingers versus your arms to control instead. Remember guys, if you're bored watching this, go ahead and smash the like button down there. Subscribe if you're not subscribed.
So here's a few photos of what the actual line that we're tying into looks like. We've got a uh, reducer from a 12 inch to an eight inch. So now at this point, I'm going to be hooking up to the stand pipe as they unbolt the reducer from the main line. And that way it's going to secure it. And when they're all the way unbolted, I'll be able to just lift it up out of the hole. And we're going to do this slowly because there's water in the line. We're going to throw a pump in the hole and pump the water as it bleeds out. So you can see here the hose from the pump has several kinks in it and it causes issues with it not flowing fast enough so you're not going to get the best performance out of your pumps unless you get rid of all the kinks in your hose. All right, it looks like water is just about all the way pumped out. We're going to go ahead and pull this uh, stand out, or the, the 90 with all the reducer and everything on it. Set it to the side and out of the way. And you want to make sure you're setting it off to the side somewhere that you can pick it up and move it out of the way onto the job site so it's not left in the road in the way. And a bunch of monkeys yelling at me saying I did a good job. They're all weird. So because I set myself up in a good position, I was able to reach both of the risers just from one position using the extend a hoe and the back hoe. From this point, we are going to go ahead and pull out this last piece as we did prior, pump water, get this piece set out of the way. And then we're going to proceed with installing a new line that will tie in the two endpoints and complete the system. So here you can see we've installed the reducer, tied it down to the 8 inch pipe, and they are currently putting in the sleeve for the final connection point. Yeah, I scared him by making him a little noise, but he'll live. And he's always the joker. So remember when you tighten these bolts up on the mega lugs, you want to you don't want to tighten them up in a circle pattern. You want to tight, tighten them up like you're going to tighten up the wheels on your car. You want to do kind of a star pattern or a crisscross pattern. Thank you. 
So here's some photos of the finished product. We will wrap these in plastic and then we'll bury them. So the next day, this is the end of our day, we did two tie-ins. This is the second one. So you can see we connected our wire, it's all taped up, and that's the completed job ready for backfill. Thank you for hanging out and watching the video, guys. If you made it to the end, if you liked the video, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. As always, keep your butt level and your ditch straight.